So uh, thank you for having us over. Uh, what I'm going to talk today about, not so much about technology, even though we were invited to talk about technology. I'm going to talk today a little bit more about how you achieve the best possible results for your environment. Because uh, I don't know if you already mentioned, the technology that I will show you today was uh, created by coaches for coaches. So all the founders of technology, including myself, were former professional athletes that later become sports doctors, sport biologists or physiologists and coaches. For example, I was a coach. So when we realized there has to be more to coaching than what it was at the time, which we started in 1980s, um, the primary reason this was created, how do we help coaches to make proper decisions on the spot? That was the primary concern. So technology today, I'll show you. Again, we need to understand from standpoint of methodology, how this technology will help you to be a better coach by applying a better methodology of training. So whatever methodology that you use, I believe we can improve it. And I will explain you exactly how we're going to do it. So before we even go, First, let's discuss quickly under which conditions your athlete or your whole team will achieve best possible performance. Because at the end, this is what we are after. In your case, it might be position in uh, your league, right? Or it's a transition to the new league, higher league. Or some of you maybe work with national teams, so it's a world championship. But again, how do we get there? So uh, we need to understand that there is multiple components that contribute to that successful performance. So uh, the first component that I want to discuss is this red line, is the curve of preparedness. It's how well your athletes prepared, it matters. And then let's quickly discuss what does preparedness really means. Uh, we all okay with English though, do we need translation or anything? <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I can speak Russian. That's me. But so what is this curve? Of course, the higher you are on that curve, the better. Well, first we start with primary parameter is sports mastery. Right? It's skill. It doesn't matter how fit you are, it doesn't matter how mentally strong you are, if you don't have a skill to play hockey you're not going to be successful. And that skill is almost impossible to develop in your environment, in a professional, on a professional level. That skill was developed or searched for at the younger ages. So what professionals team do most of the time, that's the parameter they buy. So they go, they observe, and they say, oh, this is the people we want. And they invite them, they buy them. So this curve can be, Short term, just preparation for the season and the season itself, or it can be long term. Child enters your sport program here and retires here. So for children, development of a sport mastery is very, very important. For your players, already not so. There is not many coaches who can uh, teach, for example, Messi how to play football. It's just not going to happen, right? So we find them, we bring them into our team. And this sport master, it's their ability to make proper decision at the proper time, process multiple uh, channels of information, where the players are, where the pack is, how everything is moving, and where I need to be at very particular time. That is very hard to develop. So you buy it. But in itself, if I have this ability of uh, having a great skill, it, in itself it's not enough. So I can process the best way information, but if I'm not physically fit enough to work on this level, my ability, my skill goes off the field very quickly. As fatigue starts getting in, if the velocity is too high, right? I might be very skillful, but if I don't have physical capacity to sustain this level of playing, I'm not going to be successful. So physical is important. 
of course, uh, tactical, right? I can be physically fittest athlete or player. I can have tremendous skill, but I can't function within this group of people, right? That's why if you old Russian hockey or new hockey nowadays, you remember those combination of particular athlete in a crew were extremely important. Why? Because they could function a single unit. So that ability to install where athletes can feel each other with closed eyes is very important. This is your primary job as coaches, right? So you have to make them play together very well. So that's another component of this curve. And then, of course, uh, mental and so on. There is multiple components. So what do you do as a coach? And probably not just you, also people in a conditioning world and medical doctor, all together, you are responsible for different components here. And by improving those components, you move your team up on this curve of preparedness. They get in better prepared and better prepared and better prepared. So that's fantastic, but doesn't guarantee you good performance. Unfortunately not. That's exactly the reason why we see in Chelsea that is very well prepared can lose to team of a third division. And it happens all the time. In hockey, it happens very often, right? Why did we as a uh, former Soviet Union lost the uh, Olympic Games to Americans? Were they better prepared? Absolutely not. They were not better prepared. But why did they win? So for that, we need to clearly understand being very well prepared is not enough. You have to be very well prepared, but you also have to be ready. So this is the curve of readiness. It fluctuates all the time. The only time you're going to achieve optimal performance where you are very well prepared and you're ready. Readiness is purely physiological. Here's a very good example. I can take any team right now in any state of their preparedness, fly them around the world, and at that point, their readiness is low. Mind you, preparedness didn't change. It's still there because all of these are long-term adaptations. You install it over a long period of time. They don't just go away, but the athlete's ability to show that level disagree, uh, disappears because of low readiness. So we need to discuss today readiness. So how do we control readiness? Readiness we also can call cost of adaptation. That's the price they pay for everything that we do to our athletes. It's a physiological parameter, right? So here's a very good example. Uh, of course, these three parameters interrelated. Load, preparedness, and readiness. Uh, you as a coaches need to control these three parameters. If you are successful at controlling these three parameters, you will be very successful as a coach. Why is it important to control readiness? Because, well, th this is what happens. If uh, you continue to train people while their readiness, biological readiness low, or the other words, levels of fatigues are very high, level of fatigue, level of stress, their probability, so, and we enter inadequate adaptation, they don't recover anymore. So their preparedness level slowly will start disagreeing as well. But that's exactly when we start having injuries and so on. But for you, again, we are only talking about how do we squeeze the most out of your team. Next slide, please. This is why readiness is so important. Let's take two teams, team red, team black. So let's say this is uh, Real Madrid, this is uh, some second division team. And yet, team that can, let's say, this is readiness fluctuation in a better prepared team. This is readiness fluctuation in a less prepared team. In any given moment of time, right here, this team is untouchable. And right here, this team is untouchable. But at this point, when the readiness is not there, even less prepared team can beat them. And it happens all the time all the time. So, even though when we talk about youth sport, it's very important to concentrate on their preparedness, 
in a pro sport, it's very important to concentrate how do you manage their readiness. When they go to the game day, you better be sure that they are ready. Because without this component, they cannot show whatever they have. They won't be successful. They can't show it, even if they have it. So, controlling of readiness will become one of the most important part in the professional sport. It doesn't matter if it's the Olympic Games, World Championship, or a season. It doesn't matter. So, now, understanding this, move next. Let's look exactly, what is it exactly we measure right now in the world of sport to determine what readiness is? We actually don't even talk about readiness. Honestly, most of the conventional methods are primarily designed to measure preparedness. By no means I'm trying to criticize conventional science. We are conventional scientists ourselves. But let's look at what you have to do. So if I need to make optimal training decision, what do we have? Subjective information supplied by an athlete. We always ask uh, questions. How do you feel? Fill up this questionnaire. That's a great thing, but I can tell you exactly why it's not very reliable. It's better than nothing, but it doesn't tell me the whole story. There's no way athlete can communicate with you that he's metabolic system is uh, depressed. There is no way he can tell you his central nervous system ability to process information is inhibited. They can only tell you, I'm very tired, which is true, but by that time it's already too late. It means all of those processes already happened. So information about training stimuli in characteristics, that's what you have. As a coach, what do you do? You say, I am creating training plan, so I know exactly what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, and how much I'm doing it. That information you have. You control that information perfectly. That's a good start. Performance analysis. So now we use all kinds of stuff. Heart rate monitors, uh, lasers to measure lengths of strides, time they play, intensity at which they play through heart rate monitors and all of that stuff. Good information. Medical and biological testing. Well, absolutely. A couple times a year, you're lucky, you do uh, some kind of lab analysis, right? So you do VO2 max or muscle biopsies or whatever that you do. We're doing it still, too. Uh, and then, of course, all kind of field technologies. I can measure movements of my athlete from left to right, from right to left. I can see exactly how many times they perform attack on the goals. I can see exactly how many uh, hits they had and so on. That's all fantastic. All of these are missing one very important part that have to contribute to management, true management. It's everyday physiological feedback or readiness concerning the athlete state. So this is the information we need on a daily basis that can measure athlete readiness and give us very simple, very quick response. Here's the data and here's what it means. Now, the key question is what it does it mean? Because we can collect lots of data, but not every data going to answer these questions for multiple reasons. A, for example, we can do medical and biological testing, but you can't do them every day. Therefore, that's out of the question. We can't do it. We can do lots of, for example, blood panels tests. But if I give you as a coach blood panel with more than uh, 100 different parameters, how are you going to understand this is, okay, how ready is my athlete based on this data? For that, we need to clearly understand the macro level parameters and macro level parameters. So micro level parameters, that would be the parameters on the cellular level. So for example, if I measure your hormones, saliva, blood, um, if I do muscle biopsy, all of these are micro level parameters. In itself, 
us to coach to coach. They are not important to us. They only as important as their contribution to macro level. Macro level, it's a systemic level. It's the whole organism. It's the whole system. It's a cardiac system. It's a metabolic system. It's a central nervous system. All together, it's macro level. Why do we need that? Because the training stressor applied only to macro level, right? And the respond to training stressor is also created only on macro level. It never created on the level of the cell or single hormone. They are contributors, but by no means they are responsible for creation of a response. So if we want to measure readiness and we want to actually understand what these data are telling us, we need to measure macro parameters. Not the hormones, not the uh, gas exchange. They're wonderful. But we need something that can tell us right away, this is the systemic functioning, these systems are failing, and based on these systems, the ability to perform certain type of training is limited. That's exactly what were the principles of, for creation of this technology, right? So now I'm going to show you exactly what we do, how we do it, and uh, stuff like that. So the next, please. Um, now, the important part about our company, I think, is also not that we provide people technology. By measuring athletes over tens of years now, our database, including more than 300,000 assessments from world's elite sport organizations, everywhere from track and field, hockey, football, NFL, NHL, all kind of data. And by analyzing this data and comparing this data to the success of these teams, are they winning? Are they losing? Are they getting injured? Are they not injured? Are their players dying from cardiac arrest? We have in our database, database all the way from world, people setting world records, all the way down to people dying from cardiac arrests. So what we did with this data, we created a, what we call expert system. So raw data means absolutely nothing to anybody, unless you understand how does it relate to ability to perform or to probability to get injured? So we created this very large expert system that now every time we collect data that we will show, this data enters into that expert system, which is basically a huge, huge, huge uh, matrix. Here is how people look when they die. Here is how people look more likely when they win and anything in between, right? It's always been uh, compared to their ability to perform to their max. And only after this data enters into that matrix, we, our system actually gives you the easy to follow answers. Here is the state of your athlete. Here is their levels of fatigue, stress, blah, blah, blah. Based on this, we compare, we actually monitor more than 150 parameters but our expert system spits out just very few combined conclusions. So in particular, in this case, our conclusions uh, follow two primary principles. A, by collecting all this data from different uh, systems, from brain, from myocardium, from muscle, we identify the readiness of different biological systems to support physical activity. And from there, we do the next step. Based on clear understanding of your biological readiness, we'll describe what your window of opportunity is. This is the concept that we as a company uh, developed. It calls windows of trainability. So uh, what it, basically, I will summarize it in two short uh, sentences. The most important thing is not what you do, it's when you do it. So exactly the same workout today can produce terrible results 
and the same workout tomorrow can produce excellent results. What is the reason? It's a biological starting point. If I'm fully regenerated, fully recovered, everything working perfectly, my ability to receive, process, digest training load and form positive adaptation to it is very, very high. If at the same time my biological system is in a state of fatigue, my ability to process, digest and form positive adaptation is limited. Therefore, even if I apply the load, but the system not capable of properly form the response to it, my response will be not useful. It's a very simple concept. So when uh, we mentioned today Kentucky University uh, PhD, that's exactly what it is. They train two different groups, one based on our window of trainability, one as usual. And then they compared all the results, speed, power results, endurance results, all kind of results. And I don't know if Garrett already said, the experimental group that was using windows of trainability showed significantly higher improvements in all the categories together with significantly lower volume of training. Because when their windows were closed, they stayed back and decreased their volume or intensity of training. That's that simple. But now for us as a coaches, how do we manage it on a team level? So I can measure one person, fine. But you have to deal with probably 20, 30 people at the same time, right? So what I'm going to do now, I will ask Michael to actually uh, use the test, real life test. Uh, maybe you can plug it into. Uh, so meanwhile, while he does this, this is the primary part of technology. This is collection data. It might be looking like simple heart rate monitor, but it's not. This is a true ECG machine, I mean high quality medical ECG grade ECG. It's also EEG machine because if I plug this in, it measures part of EEG or very slow physiological processes of the brain. And EMG machine, all in one. So uh, we collect multiple points of data at rest. It takes only three minutes for an athlete. They can collect it on their mobile device anywhere in the world. And you as a coach will have analysis of this data instantaneously in your computer, iPad, or anything else. And it can analyze individual athletes of yours, or it can analyze the whole team at the same time. I'll show you in a second how it's done. So the uh, beauty of it is completely done at rest. So uh, you can manage your people from anywhere in the world. The original system that we had utilized the real ECG machines, the real EEG machines. So it was a very large system. And we used it in many sports, right? With, uh, you had, back then you had to wire classic way, uh, 12 lead ECG. You had multiple electrodes on the head. Now we basically, all of that can be done with this. Technology is a wonderful thing. And this ability we actually uh, design, uh, would be great if you can uh, connect. Yeah. Or you can do it seating, it doesn't matter. Um, we designed it actually, we started with uh, English Rugby Union because they said, well, fantastic. We worked with them when they won their uh, World Cup in Australia. They said, this is all great, but can we give system to athletes themselves? Because our biggest problem always is when they come to the camp for national team, we have absolutely no clue who we have in. Some athletes come trashed. Some athletes come completely recovered because they didn't play lately. Some athletes come injured. Is there any way we can do things when we can track our athletes while they're outside our facility? That's why original idea of this uh, was created. How do we miniaturize it and make it individual for players? 
And what you're going to see today is actually done together with uh, another client of ours, which is football club uh, Ajax. We went with them and we said, look, you have our professional system. And professional system is very medically oriented. It gives you all kind of raw data, of all kind of parameters and everything. And they say, that's great, but most of the coaches, scientists understand this data, doctors understand this data, coaches don't understand this data at all. So we said, okay, fine, let's work together to create the presentation of data that will be suitable for all of your coaches, starting from conditioning people all the way to the head coach. So now this is the actual collection of data. So what we have here, uh, this is a process. This is data collection for uh, ECG and this is data collection for EEG. So we're not using muscle tests right now. Uh, that will be incorporated a little bit later. Uh, so after this takes approximately three minutes, so uh, please bear with us. And then we'll show you how data is processed instantaneously. And the same data can be looked in a different format on the coach's iPad or a pro system. The pro system is quite a little too complicated, to be honest. We found for general coaches, unless, unless you have uh, either medical background or sports science uh, background, that amount of data just not needed. So in this particular application, there is only data that can help you make your decision very rapidly, very quickly for whole team or one individual. So, uh, good example, uh, last Olympic Games, for example, using this technology, the Canadian teams were controlled from Calgary. So every time athletes tested, the data was available to scientists in Calgary. So they looked at the data and they would communicate with coaches in hockey uh, to what to do, volumes, intensities of training or substitution, which players more likely to show excellent performance, which are players more likely to show decreased performance. So it's basically management. All it is, real biological markers, identification of how ready these athletes are to respond to demand, and based on that, a decision. So as we can see, uh, ECG collection is done. Now we are almost here. So uh, we found there is different, since he's testing anyway, there's different ways of how different clubs using it. Even though athlete can have it on their own uh, phone, some clubs prefer athlete not to see any data at all. So as a coach, you can choose on your iPad. I don't want them to see it. So they will see this data, but no conclusions of any kind. So you are the only one who knows exactly how they are. Second, uh, some coaches don't trust athletes to collect data at home. In that case, the athlete has to come to the facility to be tested under supervision of coach or scientist or conditioning coach or whoever. So that's, uh, those options are open. Uh, and we found actually there is natural progression. For example, in Ajax, they started testing them right there in the facility, but now they allowed in players to do it all on their own. So by the time they come to practice, and this has one very positive thing, because if uh, they just test themselves before practice, you have that window of two hours, right? Where the coaches already can look at the data, make their decision, have a short uh, discussion about it. Versus when they come here, now you collect all the data, now you have to make a decision in the rush. So this is uh, the information, just a second, maybe first screen. This is windows of trainability. 
for individual. Now, ability to develop endurance, ability to develop speed and power, ability to develop strength, and ability to develop coordination and skills. As we can see in his case, ability to develop endurance and strength, windows are completely open. Uh, speed and power and uh, coordination and skill, somewhat limited. So this, there is uh, explanation why. Okay, can you close it please? And can you switch to the next screen? So this based on his contributors, the state of his central nervous system, state of his cardiac system, and state of his metabolic system, which in all cases, all three systems appear to be in a good state, not optimal, nevertheless, good. His ability to uh, perform at high intensity is reasonably good. The only area not advisable is anaerobic development area. This is heart rates. How we do that, our technology uh, by analyzing uh, biological parameters also on a daily basis uh, defines your heart rate at an aerobic threshold. So we know where it is today, if it's going down, if it's going up. And based on that, it calculates this. Of course, these contributors are calculated individually from different assessments. So this is his behavior over the past week. So green area, yellow, red. This is central nervous system. Now, this is, in my opinion, we found, and I, if you're interested to stay later, I can show you research we published in European College of Sport Science last year. This parameter was the best parameter. This is a very slow physiological processes of the brain. So DC potential as a general described by science as a system that allows human organism to adapt and compensate for environment. So what do you do in hockey? You create environment, right? And you throw them into it and you hope they become better. So their ability to adapt to that environment you create, training session, is will be directly linked to the functional state of their uh, DC potential or their ability of central nervous system to process information and form proper response. So this parameter in particular in that research show highest correlation for performance of quarterbacks in the uh, football NFL environment. So when this parameter is high, their ability to make proper decision, execute the throw precisely, was very high. These parameters start coming down, the amount of mistakes they start making rises substantially. So we don't have any research done in hockey yet, but we have research in football, rugby, uh, NFL, American football, track and field. I don't see it's going to be uh, boxing, I don't see it's going to be any different in hockey, but uh, okay, next. This is uh, cardiac and autonomic parameters, next. And this is uh, metabolic parameters, in particular their aerobic readiness, their anaerobic readiness, and their metabolic efficiency, or how well the body will respond to metabolic demand. And then, of course, you, you might never look at it, honestly. You might never even look at this, because now we're going to show you how the coach view shows the same data. Because this athlete can have themselves, their conditioning coach can have it, but when we talk about, so I know we probably short on that one, two, yeah. So, and can you then go next? So uh, this is what allows us to do that. There is a cloud, so every time athlete collects the data, it immediately enters into the coach computer. Keep going. So you already seen this, uh, simple, keep going. So this is everything that coach can see on their iPad. You can go as deep as you want into your athlete or your doctor, right? Or, keep going. So this is a different type of training solution. When windows are completely open, and when windows are almost closed due to the contributors. But the most important, yeah, move. So this is all the data that can be, keep going, keep going, keep going. Here we go. 
So a coach can look at whole team very quickly. This is the people that did not test it today. This is the people who have no limitations. So it means they can perform to their highest capacity. And this is the people whose windows are sub-open. So what we've done in professional sport very often then people can be trained. The solution is entirely up to you. We're just telling you. Here's the people that will respond to training very well with probability of injury very low and whatever task you put on them, challenging task to learn new uh, tactics or stuff, they will be very successful at forming that adaptation. This is the people that can still adapt to a lots of things you do, but not as efficiently. We can determine exactly how. And this is the people, for example, if they are in red, which I hope you don't see it often, but you do. Sometimes people get sick. Sometimes people develop uh, arrhythmias and so on. So a system will pick it up. Uh, we are not diagnostic tool. We never try to diagnose anything, but there can be a red flag reason telling you this person needs to see doctor before you continue because there might be medical arrhythmia or uh, so on. So this is one way to look exactly, okay, here's my group. Of course, when you go into the game, the more people you have in this column, the better. And then the other way, if I just uh, looking at this data, again, team by overall readiness. So it calculates average for the whole team and it calculates each contributing system. So you can know, okay, my, most of the team shows significant decrease of central nervous system functioning. Everything else is absolutely fine, but this is the limitation, right? Actually, you can click on CNS right here. Uh, oh, we can do it, this is a presentation. And it will rearrange all of this. So which means then you know, if CNS is a limiting factor and you have a game tomorrow, you better do some kind of activities that allows you to stimulate and recover that component before the game. And here's another thing that we do with our clients. Uh, once again, we are not only technology company. We have multiple coaches all over the world, world's leading coaches affiliated with our company. If we don't have the answer for you, some of our users will have the answer. What is the best approach to change this condition rapidly? Uh, so this is on the technology side itself. But again, the most important part now, how do we manage everything? So one of the uh, research we published last year, which was done in NFL, whole season, right? We did whole season. They provided us not only our data, they provided us their training data, every training session, every rep, every set, every training process, every ball thrown, every yard covered, every injury, in, uh, injury that happened during that season. We had it all. In fact, we had more than 140, 84 parameters to analyze for seven months. 184 parameters multiplied by 25 people multiplied by seven times. This is the amount of data we're capable at analyzing. I will only summarize the most important part. The readiness markers, readiness, the biological, internal markers, constantly showed us the best predictors for performance, injury, and winning and losing. So in why? I can explain that in a very simple term. Those of you who want to see the actual study, we will be happy to provide. Very simple. It's not what you do, it's how your body responds to it. So we can have exactly the same load, you and me. I'm in the level of fatigue already, you are not. So I can measure the load, no problem. According to load, we did the same work but the cost is different. My biological cost is huge. You are fully recovered in two hours. So the injury, when injury happens, load is not a predictor. It's a bad predictor. When injury happens, it's actually the biological cost. 
or that readiness that becomes one of the best predictors. And we already proved it. This is how we study all the contributors to target. So we basically now start helping teams to optimize not only biological markers, but everything they do. For example, I will introduce you quickly to the study we're going, are we still okay on time? I will very quickly introduce you to study that we actually presented this year in European College of Sports Science. This was last year, the NFL. This year we're doing, we publish in research with one of the premiership clubs in rugby. So next. So this is, uh, uh, how do we help people to optimize training process? Now we know what you do, assuming you want us to know. It's entirely up to you. Now we know what price you pay or your players pay, right? Now we can optimize, we can tell you. When you do this, you're more likely to win. When you do this, you're more likely to lose. So here's how we do it. Go ahead. So this is uh, what we do. So we collect daily data. So coaches just collect the data, right? Then we use a non-linear type of analysis of this data. We use in Bayesian networks, right? That analyzes relationship of everything to everything, basically, very simple way. Then we create a model, prediction and conclusion, solution and optimization, and it's constantly going this way to optimize result. Example of this uh, process. Go ahead. So this is uh, all the data that we collect, anthropometrical, physiological, training law, training description, player profile, performance. They provide us all this data. They record it anyway, right? This data done by our technology. Then we prepare the data, then we understand all the, in this case, it's actually a smaller case than NFL we did. It was only 75 variables and uh, 362 samples. But still pretty, then we, uh, what we do, we combine our knowledge as coaches, our knowledge of uh, biologists, we have ma uh, mathematicians, we combine all this data, we use in machine learning, but under supervision of biologists, coaches, and mathematicians. Because we create the basic model of what's happening in your team. So we know exactly how everything you do is related. What they eat, how it related to physiology, how physiology is related to their training, how training related to their performance. By the way, most of the coaches never need to know that. I'm just showing you how we do it. Solution is actually quite simple at the end. But this is the process how we get to simple solution. Next. So this is, for example, task for us. First, we need to understand what are primary contributors for this team of winning or losing. For them, it was very clear. Our struggle was one of the biggest contributors that make them win or lose the game. It's England, they travel by bus. Uh, work capacity test, it's a fitness test that they perform. And uh, tackles, number of tackles. As long as those parameters were within certain norms, they were more likely to perform successfully. But for example, the solution here is, you can't change our struggle, right? You can, I mean, unless you fly, but it's also prohibitive. But the next case, we analyze what functional state, what physiological parameters can compensate for the, those hours troubled. Can we change physiology in such a way that will minimize the impact of our struggle? And we found, yes, in fact we can. By changing their training in very particular way, we can minimize the impact of our struggle. And this is the precisely what components of physiology we need to change and through which process. So what type of exercises will be more successful or less successful. Then we did the same for work capacity. So primary contributors, then we identify internal contributors, physiological. Is there is connection between uh, primary com components and physiological components? And then uh, there is external contributors. How do we change practice that will affect these biological parameters in such a way that will positively change contributors. 
and then we apply it. So we create solution for coaches, they do intervention, they change what they do, and then we remeasure everything. Okay, so now we see improvement. Now we can go even further by optimizing something else. How do we do that? Go on. Next. Basically, this is what's behind. You don't need to know that. I'll show you the solution for coaches. It's very simple. But basically, we take winning and losing. We create a model. This is all the different contributors. How their physiology, how their training load, how their uh, performance, how their competition, how all of them contribute to this. Of course, accuracy of these models validated through science. There is 93% truly represent the actual environment in this team. We can see again, the, the, our DC parameters, the closer it is to the uh, target, the more relationship there is. Okay, next. And then we create this model, keep going. Well, already I know we are late. So uh, that's how we create these outputs. Here's the, uh, for example, conclusion for coach. We let coaches optimize training themselves if they don't want us to do it. How? First of all, we create the dashboard for the most important contributors. And let's say your team performs, success is poor. So this is the contributors and that's where they add when the performance is poor, right? Now, how do we change these contributors to move it up? So now we can play with this tool. Uh, next, please. So here's what will need to happen. These contributors will need to move in this way to optimize probability of you winning. So what we give coaches, we give instantaneous ability to play with the possible future outcomes. Rather than you apply something and then you see, ah darn, didn't happen. We can increase those chances by doing analysis of your past data. For this we need at least 90 days of data, right? So it does, we can't do it just right now. So what we do, we collect the data for 90 days and then we know exactly how this data relates to itself. So this is a basic solution. I'm a coach. I want a coach solution. I don't want to bombard you with physiological data. I don't want to bombard you with medical data. To me, the most important question is, how do I change my behavior and behavior of my athletes to have the best probable outcomes? That's all there is. But time and time again, the most important parameters in this model are readiness parameters. When your athletes are ready and the window is open, they can do magic. And you probably already know that. You probably observe it. And when they are not ready due to biological fatigue, it doesn't matter what it is, central nervous system or metabolic or autonomic or whatever, it doesn't matter. It will create limitation and that limitation will allow their ability, limit their ability to form proper response to your training. It's really that simple. Of course, behind it, it's uh, quite complicated, but the solution we build is, should be simple enough, inexpensive, anybody can use it, so, uh, that's pretty much, I think, uh, we explain everything. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, but, thank you.